Hi, I'm David and this is The Biology Classroom. In this video, I'm going to talk about the recombinant DNA technology. I will use the insulin synthesizing bacteria as an example. I will first give you the big idea and then we'll look at each step in detail. These are the steps involved when you want to produce bacteria which are capable in synthesizing human insulin. First, you have to obtain the gene of interest. This is the gene which codes for the products you want the host cells to produce in the end. So in this case, it is the human insulin gene. Then, amplify its number by a process called polymerase chain reaction, PCR. Other than the gene of interest, you also need to find a suitable vector, a plasmid in this case, to carry the gene of interest into the host cell. Restriction enzyme is used to cut both the gene of interest and the vector, so they have sticky ends which are complementary to each other. When you incubate them together, their sticky ends anneal to each other. Use ligase to seal the nicks. In other words, to complete the sugar phosphate backbone. Use the same way to add another piece of DNA which can act as a marker gene into the vector. For example, a gene that codes for fluorescent protein. Now, insert the recombinant DNA into the host cell. This process is known as transformation. Not all bacteria will take up the recombinant DNA. So, screening process is needed to recognize the successfully transformed bacteria. Since a fluorescent gene is present in the recombinant DNA, cells which were successfully transformed will glow under the UV light. Only those cells are taken and cultured to obtain insulin. There are a few ways to obtain the gene of interest. If a gene is fully understood, scientists can sometimes produce synthetic gene from nucleotides by referring to a DNA dictionary. You can also produce the DNA by using its mRNA. mRNA for insulin gene is extracted from the cytoplasm of beta cells in pancreas. Since beta cells are specialized in producing insulin, they carry out transcription and translation for that gene. So, there are a lot of insulin mRNA in the cytoplasm. mRNA is incubated with enzyme reverse transcriptase, primers, and DNA nucleotides. Reverse transcriptase synthesizes a single-stranded DNA which is complementary to the mRNA. The hybrid is then treated with alkali, mRNA will be degraded. The single-stranded DNA is then incubated with DNA polymerase, primers, and DNA nucleotides. A second strand of DNA is then produced. This piece of double-stranded complementary DNA or cDNA can now be used. Since mRNA contains only exons, the sequence that codes for amino acid, and no introns, those that do not code for amino acids, this piece of cDNA also contains only exons. Hence, it is shorter than the insulin gene inside the nucleus. The chance of a gene successfully inserted into a vector is pretty low. So, we want to have as many genes of interest as possible. PCR is a process that makes numerous copies of a gene in a very short time. It is like a photocopy machine. It can make millions of identical copies from a template in a short time. So we can use this technique to amplify the number of the insulin gene. First, incubate the insulin gene with a type of DNA polymerase called TAC polymerase, primers, and DNA nucleotides. The temperature is increased to 95 degrees Celsius. This will separate the double-stranded DNA. Then, the temperature is reduced to 55 degrees Celsius. Annealing occurs between the single-stranded DNA and the primers as well as the nucleotides. Lastly, temperature increased to 72 degrees Celsius. This is the optimum temperature for tech polymerase. It will join the primers and the nucleotides together by forming the phosphodiester bonds. When the sugar phosphate backbone is complete, we now have two double-stranded DNA. The temperature cycle is repeated until a huge amount of DNA is produced. <laughs> In biology, a vector is an agent that carries something from one species to another. So, in this case, vector is the agent we use to carry the gene of interest into the host cell. We can't insert the insulin gene directly into the bacterium. It means nothing to them. They might just break it down and they will not express the gene. That's why we need to insert it in a vector before we introduce it to the host. The most commonly used vector is a plasmid. It is a short circular bits of DNA found naturally in bacteria. Plasmid are copied when the cells divide. So, if you insert an insulin gene into the plasmid, the cell will pass it to the next generation. When you have both the gene of interest and a suitable vector, 
it is time to combine them into one piece. Restriction enzyme or restriction endonucleases are used to cut the DNA. So they will have sticky ends which are complementary to each other. RE is an enzyme isolated from bacteria. It has the ability to make a double-stranded cut. They recognize specific sequence on DNA. For example, ECO R1 recognize and cut on the sequence GAATTC. The sequence is known as a restriction site. A restriction site is always palindromic. It means they read the same at both sides from the opposite direction. When the gene of interest and plasmid are cut by using the same restriction enzyme, they will have sticky ends that are complementary to each other. They are called sticky ends because they are ready to form hydrogen bonds with each other. When you incubate the restriction fragments together, annealing occurs due to the sticky ends. However, they are nicks between the fragments. Nicks are the gaps at the sugar phosphate backbone. The DNA pieces only form hydrogen bonds with each other, but they did not form the phosphodiester bond yet. An enzyme called ligase is used to steal the nicks. When the sugar phosphate backbone is complete, recombinant DNA or rDNA is produced. We call it recombinant DNA because it contains DNA from different sources. Not all bacteria will take up the plasmid when we try to insert them, so we need a marker for screening purposes. Any cells that successfully taking up the plasmid can be identified due to the presence of the marker. A commonly used marker is the fluorescent protein. We extract a gene that codes for fluorescent protein from jellyfish and add it into the plasmid. Any cells that take up the plasmid will then produce fluorescent protein, it will glow under the UV light, so you can easily identify them. Now, we can insert the plasmid into the host cell. The process is known as transformation. There are several ways to do it. The first one is heat shock treatment. Host bacteria and the plasmids are incubated in calcium chloride solution. The calcium-rich environment counteracts the electrostatic repulsion between the plasmid DNA and the bacterial cellular membrane. A sudden increase in temperature creates pores in the plasma membrane of the bacteria and allows plasmid DNA to enter the bacterial cell. The second way is electroporation. A short electric pulse is applied to the cells, causing small holes in the membrane through which the DNA enters. The third way is viral transfer. The plasmid is first incorporated into a virus, which is then used to infect host cells. The virus will insert the foreign gene along with its own genetic material into the host cell. Another way to transform a cell is by using a gene gun. In this technique, microscopic gold particles coated with foreign DNA are fired at the cells using a compressed air gun. It is designed to overcome the problem of the strong cell wall in some cells. Not all of the bacteria went through the transformation process are successfully transformed. A lot of them might not have taken up the plasmid. So, a screening process is needed to select the transformed bacteria. The cells are inoculated on an agar plate. They are spreading out on the plate by using an inoculating loop, so they are well separated. They are allowed to grow for a period of time. As the cells divide and pile up, they become visible to naked eyes. These are known as bacterial colonies. Since each colony was arising from a single cell, all cells in a colony are identical. In another words, each colony is either transformed or not. Since the plasmid consists of a marker gene, which is the gene for fluorescent protein, the colonies that are transformed will glow under the UV light. They will be taken and grown in a culture. When the cells grow and multiply, they will express the genes they contain. In order for a gene to be expressed in a cell, its promoter sequence must be present as well. Promoter is a segment of DNA usually occurring upstream from a gene coding region and acting as a controlling element in the expression of that gene. It initiates transcription of the genetic code. Without promoter, transcription of a gene cannot occur. Promoter binds and directs RNA polymerase to the correct transcriptional start site and thus permits the initiation of transcription. So, it is important that the promoter of insulin gene is transferred along with insulin gene itself during the process, or else we can't obtain the product in the end. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook. See you again soon.